Hi, right, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. Well, I'll in today's video some simple basic bits of crafting, and that's make a couple of these blade covers. So what I've actually got here, I've actually made just a couple up. This one here is a little birch bark mask, and the other one here is a little willow bark mask. Very simple to make, you know, quick and easy. You can actually make these, you know, within 10 or 15 minutes with very minimal equipment and a uh, little bit of kit. So all it does is just actually just fits just inside like so. And obviously it's not as tough as leather, but you know, one thing which will happen with this when it does dry out fully, it is going to be a little bit firmer than what it is at the moment. So what we got there is it's just covering the edge up or covering the blade up, and there's no chance of me stabbing myself and also cutting the inside of the bag. So we'll just take a quick close-up of uh, one of these little masks. Very simple to make, like I say. And, uh, you know, all you pretty much need is just two strips of bark, one of them, which is going to be the main piece for the uh, for the body of the little mask itself. And a little piece there, which you're just going to use for the bindings or for the whippings. Now, how you do it, you know, it can be done pretty much a thousand and one ways. And uh, the way which I'm going to show you, you know, is a very simple way. So like I mentioned there, this one there is a willow bark, a little mask, and this one here. Is a birch bark mask now birch bark again you know it's very easy to work with and uh, the beauty of this is if you've got birch bark which isn't you know the best so you know if you can't make any kind of full-size containers out of it, you've got a little bit of scrap ends these are the kinds of things which you can make you know very simple you know very quickly and it's also just gets you then you know just adapted you know to using natural materials for any kind of craft projects which you may be doing just quickly running through the items which you need to make one of these masks and uh, you know it won't take too long because you need very little stuff just the knife itself, this is the knife which we're going to make the mask for, you can actually use this just to cut off the bark and just shape the bark or you can actually carry, you know, just a little pair of scissors, that's the way which you want it to go. A tape measure or some way of just measuring things just to make sure that the dimensions are right. I'm actually just going to use just a little bit of cordage and then basically it's just deciding what kind of bark it is that you want to use. What I've got is a piece of willow, this is uh, absolutely really nice stuff, you know, easy to work with, easy to split down and again, you know, once you've actually split this down and figured out just how to get the inner bark off, this is the kind of thing that you could use for cordage. Or well, one thing which you might use is the birch bark itself. Now, this birch bark, you know, I've got quite a bit of damage in it, it's torn quite a few holes here, you know, where the twigs and branches are poking through. But this kind of birch bark, you know, a little bit raggedy and tatty, you know, is perfect for these kind of projects. If it was that you wanted to make a larger kind of vessel or some kind of container, and obviously you're looking for, you know, bark that enters forward as much as this, you know, you'd probably just get some kind of matchbox or, you know, needle container, you know, out of this kind of thing. But, you know, for the mask, this is going to be perfect. So the first thing which I'm going to do here is just actually just score this bark here. So we just actually just remove it just away from the main uh, the main branch itself. It has actually got a bit of a bit of a rip in here. We could take advantage of that. So just getting the knife, I'm just going to just score down just all the way to the bottom here. And it doesn't need very much pressure. And once you're down and you've made your cut, just in case you're just grabbing hold of the edge here and just working your way just up the, the centre of the split. And there's the main branch itself and there's the bark you know nicely removed it came off nice and clean and in one piece you know that's one thing that you're looking for so to remove the inner bark from the outer bark there's a couple of different ways which you can actually do it some bark if you fold it it'll actually split naturally and then you can just actually yeah uh, just peel it apart from each other if it doesn't quite do that one thing we can actually do is just get the knife itself and just make a very light score making sure that you don't go all the way through it all you want to do you just actually just uh, just go through that outer bark and then if you bend it And make the split just like so you can then actually just peel away the outer bark just taking your time just making sure that you don't actually rip you know the inner bark itself and then just slowly just peel the two barks away from each other like so. Once you've got your bark sorted out it's just then a case of just actually working out the dimensions and just cutting it to size. So what I may do like I mentioned is just use the birch itself for the main part of the sheath 
and then the whippings or the lashings I'm going to use this little piece of willow so the dimensions of it is for the length of the blade I'm going to times that by four and then just also make sure the width of it is just going to be just a little bit wider than the blade itself Once you've got the bark trimmed down, that's four times the length of what the blade is, plus just a little bit extra, just to stop the end from poking through the uh, through the little mask. And the width of it is just a little bit wider than the blade itself. It's then just a case of just folding it just into four. And what we've got to do is just find the centre line. And once you've actually got that centre line figured out, it's just a case of folding one end into the centre, the other end into the centre, and then folding the entire thing over. So it's an off like so. And that's pretty much there, just the makings of the beginning of the little mask. So just finding that centre point there, I'm just going to use a little bit of cordage just like we did when we measured you know, the sheath in the first place. It's just a case of just finding just the entire length, which is there, and then just folding that part into the centre. And that there is the midway point. So just laying the uh, little bit of cordage just onto the bark there. Just use my fingernail, I'm just going to just mark where that point is there and then it's down to yourself you have to decide which part of the bark you want on the outside I tend to like this inner bark here that's the part which you're going to use which is going to be on the outside of the sheath but some people like this other side it's just a case of just actually just scraping off just a little bit of papery bark which is coming off but also with that it also just helps a little bit of the grip once it's on the inside of the sheath so we're just going to fold them two edges together like I just mentioned and if you notice there uh, there was a little bit of a a little bit of a tear just in the bark there where one of the twigs poked through but that's going to be on the inside of the sheath so though that's no big deal and then we're just going to fold that in half just pushing everything together and just checking that the length of it is just a little bit longer than the blade itself and also the width is a little bit uh, a little bit wider too so the next part is just fasten everything together. Now when it comes to this part, it can be a little bit confusing at first, and I'm there gonna try my best just to make sure that the camera can pick things up. So when I'm referring to the inside and the outside, it's quite simple. This is the outside here, obviously, the outside of the sheath. And then just the little loops which had to be made just when we folded everything together, these parts here is what's referred to as the inside. So just starting off at the inside, and also starting off at the bottom of the sheath, this is the opening here, obviously, where the knife's going to go in. It's just a case of just getting one of the tag ends and just running it through the little loop just on the inside there. Just so it actually just pokes out just a little bit just from the bottom. And then you're going to do the same just on the opposite side. Again, just making sure that you run it just on the inside there. And if you find it easy, you can just actually just place it up to the top and just slide it in and then just pull things tight. Now, just be careful you don't pull things too tight, so just be careful that this, uh, this bark here doesn't twist. If you wanted to, if it just dries out just a little bit, just in case you just add a little bit of water to it, and that way then it'll just soften up slightly. So that's the first little sequence there, that's just on the inside, and because that one's on the inside, we're just gonna do the opposite on the next one, we're just gonna go on the outside, so it's just a case of just actually just placing that just over the top, and just going around front and back, and that's the second little sequence done there. And it's just a case of just following that sequence all the way up because we've gone on the outside here. It's just a case now of just going on the inside. Again, just making sure that that doesn't twist. As you can see there, that's just the second sequence just on the inside now. And then we're just gonna carry on doing that all the way up to the top. If you need to, 
if that uh, runs out you can just actually just place just a little bit more in just underneath there not splicing it's just such but uh, it does hold and then you can just carry on working your way up to the top so if you notice there uh, now that went on the inside to so the next wrap is going to be opposite to that that's going to be on the outside and don't worry about lapping these over the top of each other you want some kind of angle whether it's 45 degrees or whatever just working its way back up you don't want it bulking out too much and also you want to make sure they're going off of this uh, this bulk to finish off the complete set of wraps so there we went on the outside if the camera will pick that up so now we've just got to go on the inside And when you first start doing this, you know, your fingers and thumbs, things start to spring out or, you know, things loosen up. And if that happens, you know, just back off, just undo it, just pull, off, pull out the little bit of bark, which may have, you know, slackened off slightly. But like I mentioned, you know, when this stuff does dry, you will just get a little bit tighter anyway. So we just got the camera just to pick that up there. And as you can see, now I'm just coming to the end of it and uh, that's a little weave. So just starting off just on the inside, outside, inside, outside, just working your way along. And uh, if you notice a little bit of a gap here. I did actually have to splice just a little bit more then, you know, I did run out of uh, the original bark. So then just finishing off now, that one's on the outside, so I'm just going to tuck that one just on the inside. Just pulling everything through nice and evenly. And then just back, just on the inside here just to tighten everything up just around the top here and if you wanted to again just going around there and that's just going to strengthen just the top Just taking your time just when you initially just push things down. You know, you may have twisted the bark just a little bit on the inside. But one thing I like to do just to, just during the initial drying stages is just to keep this on and then it will just stop it just from twisting if it does twist. And then also as it tightens up, you know, I'm just to tighten up just around the blade. And there we have it, just a little finished product. That now can be put away, you know, in your bag. You know, I'm getting fears about it cutting through, you know, damaging the material, or also, you know, if you accidentally grab it by the blade, you know, any chance of cutting yourself. You know, being aware, you know, it's not as strong as leather, it's certainly not as strong as Cardex and the likes. You know, it's just a quick way, you know, just being able to protect a blade and also to protect yourself. And again, you know, done in a very similar kind of fashion, you can actually make a, an axe mask, you know, out of the same kind of stuff and the same kind of procedures, really. So just before we head off and say goodbye, one thing I'd like to announce is I have got a bit of a giveaway. This is a 200 subscriber giveaway, absolutely chuffed a bit that so I've got that many subscribers. And for you guys that watch the video, you know, commenting and supporting the channel, you know, I really do appreciate it and want to say thanks. So to say thanks, one thing I've got here is an SE3 which I'm going to give away. Very simple to enter, all you've got to do is just leave a comment at the end of the video. Just something along the lines of, I want the knife or I want the SE. Absolutely awesome knife, I've only used it the once, you know, it's not brand new and the fact of, you know, it's come straight out of the packet. I did a video once and I actually just carved just the end off a couple of sticks and that's all it's actually been used for. So 1095 carbon steel, G10 handle scales, Benham green and orange, you know, not everyone's preferred colour. I actually brought a few of these as a safety knife when I was working on some of the big lakes down in the southwest. So there it is guys, all you've got to do, just leave a little comment saying I want the SE knife. And then I'll get in touch with you, you know, I'll give you my email address. And then we can just work something out and actually get it posted to you. So I'll probably announce the winner on the next video, which I'll do. So we're probably, you know, around about seven days sometime next week. So there we have it, guys. Just want to say thanks a lot for you stopping by and watching the video. Like always, the Ashley Knife's there if you want to leave a comment. So until next time, you take care and I'll see you again.